ನಿತ್ಯಂದಂ ಪರಮಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಸ್ಯಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಏಕಂ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವೀ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ Yes, Nityandam. Unclutching and enriching. Enriching, if not unclutching. If you have any question you can ask, I can share my clicks and cognitions about that question. there is no question take a moment just sit with yourself close your eyes and clutch coming back to the space of pure oneness not engaging with any thoughts feelings or emotions and clutch
And um, if you have any question, you can share your question, I can answer with whatever clicks, cognition, spiritual context I have. Otherwise, you can clutch with me, just sitting still and not engaging with any thoughts, feelings and emotions, simply unclutched. If you have a question you can write it in the comments i'll read it and share insights that i have regarding this so questions are welcome in the comments you can ask your question otherwise you can sit a few minutes with me and unclutch in the space of oneness with paramashiva with swamiji without engaging with thoughts, emotions, and feelings, just in a pure state, superconsciousness. reaching out to you with the science of unclutching or cognitions, enriching cognitions, powerful cognitions. If you have a question, put it in the comments. I'll answer it with the clicks and cognitions I have regarding this question. Otherwise, sit with me a few minutes, unclutched, not engaging with any thoughts, any emotions, any feelings. Don't fight. Don't try to destroy. Don't try to get rid of. Just don't engage. Let it arise and disappear, just like a bubble in a water tank. But you remain untouched settled in the space of oneness with Swamiji, with Paramashiva. If you have any questions, drop it in the comments. I'll answer with my clicks and the cognitions I got from Swamiji. Otherwise, sit with me a few minutes, unclutch in the space of oneness. Don't engage with any thoughts, feelings, or emotions. Don't fight with the thoughts don't try to destroy the thought, just let it arise and disappear, just like a bubble in a water tank, while you remain settled in the superconsciousness of Paramashiva, in oneness with Paramashiva.
If you have a question, you can drop it in the comments. I'll read it and answer it. Yes, if you have any question, write it, I'll share the insights, clicks, cognitions I have about this question. Otherwise, if you don't have any question, just sit a few minutes in the space of unclutching, not engaging with any thoughts. not fighting or trying to destroy thoughts, just let them pass by without clinging on to them. Like a bubble freely flowing towards the surface of a water tank. While you remain in the space of pure oneness, Paramashiva. If you have any question, drop it in the comment below. Otherwise, sit with me a few minutes, unclutch from thoughts. Don't allow the chains of thoughts to be created. Don't cling to any thought. Just be unclutched. Clutching is a meditation technique, most powerful, most simplest meditation technique shared to the world by Swamiji, His Divine Holiness, Nityananda Paramashivam. If you have any question to which you seek an answer, you can share it with me. I can share the clicks and cognitions I have regarding this question. Otherwise, just 
just sit a few minutes and clutched with me in the space of oneness with Swamiji, with Paramashiva. If you have any questions, drop it in the question in the comments below. Ityandam Vasantha. Yes. Otherwise, if you don't have any questions, you can sit with me a few minutes, unclutching from thoughts, not clinging on to any thoughts, not allowing any thoughts. To perturb your space. If you have a question, put it in the comments. I'll read it and share my clicks and the cognitions I got regarding this. Bring more clarity. And um, sit a few minutes and clutched. Watch your thoughts as if you are watching a bubble in a water tank, freely traveling from the bottom to the top. Don't cling on to it, just be unclutched. Going back to the space of Nirvikalpa Samadhi, oneness with Swamiji, with Paramashiva. If you have any questions, write it in the comments. I'll share my clicks and cognitions regarding the question to bring more clarity, more seeking. Otherwise, sit with me a few minutes, the space of unclutching. Hey, Nityandam Tony. No, I'm not in Scarborough actually. Not right now. Long time no see, Tony. When you have time, practice this unclutching meditation. Just sitting with yourself, not clinging to any thoughts, as if you were watching bubbles in a water body untouched by everything, the space of oneness with Swamiji, with Paramashiva. Great. Hey, we miss you too, Tony. Unexpected times. We are in unexpected times.
You too, Tony. Thanks. Blessings, blessings. Swamiji is there. He'll take care. Yes. One thing Swamiji shared I can share with you while you're here is uh, to reduce the intake of solid food that helps to keep the body fit, healthy, and to reduce the amount of tox of uh, stools sitting in our guts. That's very important. Reducing solid food helps. And he says that after sunset, actually, we should not eat. So we should let the fire, the digestive fire, to consume whatever is inside and uh, to, so that we can sleep properly, better sleep. So if you can reduce the solid food and if you can avoid eating after, after uh, sunset, simple things which can do great things. Yeah, for nutrients, have liquids. You can have you can have solid mean uh, solid meal when sun is up. So you can if you if you have if you worry about nutrients, you can back up some some content there. But uh, otherwise, in juices, we can get almost everything. Almost everything. As of now, I'm only consuming one meal a day, one solid meal a day, pretty much between 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., somewhere in between that time. And in the evening, when sun is down, make a soup, take some vegetables. You can blend it if you want. It's better, the more liquid it is, the better. But if you, if you want to have something, a, a more substance, you can blend it with whatever vegetables you put. Solid food in the system creates friction actually and it it makes the the brain function an extra uh, more than is required and it takes energy so when we have liquids instead especially after sunset then the brain doesn't have to do extra activity and it's easier for the digestive system and uh, yeah i mean it's a win 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 It's a practice from the yogis actually, in the yogi uh, sampradayas. They don't consume food after sunset. In Hinduism, uh, we, we have something that we uh, call the digestive fire. And the digestive fire is responsible for the quality of digestion you have. When your digestive fire is strong, you digest food very easily. When you don't, uh, you have you don't digest food easily so that creates sleeping issues and other types of issues so when you stop eating after sunset you do not overload the fire because when sunset happens when sun goes down the digest the digestive fire reduces so when the digestive fire reduces our capacity to digest reduces so the, in the yogic tradition they say when sun goes down the power that the digestive fire has is only enough to digest what you've already consumed in the day. So don't add anything extra. Have liquids instead. Coconut water is very, it's a rich liquid. Otherwise soups, juices. I, I don't take any specific liquids. I mean, coconut water I find is very good because somehow it gives that filling experience. Um, it fills you more than other liquids and otherwise soups, vegetable soups. I put uh, sweet potatoes, carrots, celery, beetroot, 
just whatever is there. I, I don't mix it anymore. Back then I used to mix it, but now I just take the broth, some spices, a little bit of oil. Yes, Tiandam. It gives you a very strong gut. Your guts become very strong. When they're not overloaded with solid food, they become very strong. Another thing you can do uh, while you're at it is actually consuming castor oil. Maybe one to three teaspoons a day, depending on how your system um, responds. But castor oil is like a lubricant which sticks to your internal organs, especially the guts and the stomach. And uh, it, it doesn't allow the food to stagnate, so it, it helps the food to leave the system as fast as possible. The solid food that you consume should leave your body as soon as possible. And uh, the sooner the better for your health. Because when food stacks up inside, and it stacks up very easily depending on what type of food you consume, uh, the toxins get reabsorbed by the body. A certain amount of the toxins of the stools get reabsorbed in the body. And that, that naturally goes against your health. So the faster, the less amount of stools uh, in your system, the healthier you will be. And, and that will translate in various manifestations of health. So castor oil is a very simple but powerful technique. One of the superfoods, as Swamji calls, along with neem and the haritaki powder, harigambal juice that I don't burn with the grass, I think. So there's few types of things which you can use to really detox the body fully. Detoxing the body is like taking care of your car. If you take care of your car, your car will run smoother, better, better and longer. Same goes with the body. If you detox the body, it will run better, longer and smoother. Body is the vehicle, the tool we have to fulfill what we wish to fulfill in this life. So we should not take it for granted. We should take care of it in the way that it needs to be taken care of. Come back to unclutching for a few minutes, sitting, open eyes or eyes closed, maybe it's a little easier with eyes closed if you're not too tired and just unclutch from every thought. Don't destroy them, don't try to do anything to them. Don't get attached to them, don't, ju don't judge them. Just watch them come and watch them go. As if you're sipping a cup of tea on the side of the road and watching cars go by. Unclutched. Untouched. In the space of oneness with Paramashiva with Swamiji.
you have any question, you can write it in the comments. I'll read it and answer it with whatever clicks and cognitions I have regarding the topic to bring more clarity, insights. Otherwise, sit unclutched. Don't cling on to any thought. If you have any thought, any question, I mean, if you have any question, write it in the comments. I'll share it. I'll share the clicks, cognitions I have regarding this question. To bring more clarity. Otherwise, sit a few minutes with me. Unclutch from your thoughts. If you have any questions, please share in the comments. I'll share the clicks and insights, cognitions I have, with the hope of bringing more clarity, giving you more insight. Otherwise, sit with me a few minutes and do one clutching. Do not cling to any thought, just watch them come and go. Don't try to destroy them, don't try to engage with them in any way. Just unclutch. Yes, my sense of smell has reduced for over a year. Could you suggest what I can do to heal it?
So the two things which are coming as of now is the first uh, neti pot. I don't know if you're doing. In the morning, we do these uh, kriyas to cleanse the body. So in the pot, you put some warm water. Uh, you can do it with cold water as well, but warm water with a little bit of salt. You dissolve the salt in the water and you pour it in one nostril and you allow it to come from the other nostril and vice versa. That cleanses, that's the basic level of uh, cleaning that you can do to your nostrils and to your nasals. It removes a lot of mucus and a lot of toxins which are stuck in these passages which uh, we don't have access to. It even detoxes part of the lower parts of the brain from that mucus. Yes, so that's, that's one important thing. And the other thing um, is doing deep breathing. Deep breathing, conscious deep breathing. In the yoga tradition again, there we have this, uh, this breathing where you make the sound of the ocean, the ocean-like sound, when you inhale and when you exhale. Something like this. You can practice this breathing, very simple. And while you do that, have the conscious intention Swamji says, ultimately, even though it is maybe difficult for us to connect to that truth as of now, because we are very much acquainted and used to relate to the facts this, of the real, of this life, of this world, um, our conscious decision, our conscious declaration, our conscious intention is the source of everything. So when you do this breathing, which is very simple, but infuses tremendous awareness inside your system. At the beginning, you might struggle a little bit to create the sound, but you do it two, three days, you will get it. It's not very complicated. You just need to get used to, you have to constrict a little bit the throat so that the air doesn't flow smoothly. So it creates this ocean-like sound. It happens around here, just under the, the top of the neck, in the throat area. And while you do this breathing exercise, declare, I am declaring completion with my sense of smell. I'm declaring that the sense of smell should regain its full potential. Or you can, you can declare like that, or you can ask Paramashiva Swamiji to heal and bring completion to that sense so that it comes back to its full functions. So very simple, takes very little time, very little time. But if you do that a few times a day, surely the body gets actually, of course, the more detoxed we are, the faster the results, but we can literally change our body just by having a conscious will, conscious intention. You just declare to your body, actually, so Anji was sharing, your body, your whole biology thinks. Your brain alone is not responsible for the thinking process. In every single part of your body is part of the thinking process. So when you consciously declare, your entire body listens to the declaration and starts to align. The, f the more detoxed you are, the faster the body aligns. The less detoxed you are, the slower it goes. But Whatever, whatever it may be, your level of how detoxed your body is, uh, the conscious declaration, conscious intention will alter your body in the way that you decide to alter it. Always invoke Paramashiva Swamiji. Remember him and declare or ask him. In the state of Turiyatita, which is the highest uh, dimension, um, in the state of Turiyatita, you are your intention, nothing else. So intention, even though it is very subtle 
and sometimes we feel it is powerless it doesn't have any impact because we don't necessarily see the materialization in the physical world right away uh, even though it is possible to materialize it uh, right away but uh, because we don't necessarily see that we feel that it is less powerful less interesting but actually that is not true so remembering that declaring completion the sense of smell restoring the health not only restoring but in uh, Hinduism Swamiji was saying without sickness does not mean healthy uh, there's a word arogya which means radiating health you should be so healthy that you are radiating that energy outside when people see you they should be like oh they should be impacted by the way you radiate health arogya so let that be the remembrance let that be the standard let that be the visualization cherished Remembering that every day is enough. Remembrance liberates. Smaranat Mukti. If we just unclutch a little bit and we stop being caught in the turmoil, the tornado of life, for a few moments, remember what we want to manifest in our life. Sit with ourselves. A few moments. Unclutch. Remember Swamiji, remember Paramashiva and declare what do you want to consciously manifest in your life. If you do that regularly, tremendous transformation will happen. Always remember that Paramashiva is real, Hinduism is real. From that context, declare. That's great. Four months is nice. And clutching is very simple, but can lead to the ultimate directly. Just remembering, not getting attached to thoughts, watching them come, watching them go, not creating anything, not sustaining anything, not trying to destroy any of them. Whatever is there, you watch it come, you watch it go. Just be alert, aware, alive, but unclutched. 
do not cling to any thoughts, do not clutch to any thoughts, do not engage in any shape or form with any thoughts. What does it mean to unclutch just being aware? Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just saw the... I had a... I, uh, back then I lived in Vietnam and in Vietnam there's a habit that is very much practiced by a lot of people and is they go to the coffee shop and there's a bunch of tables right next, to the, right next to the street. People sit and just watch whatever is happening. And people driving with motorbikes and cars and everything. So when Swamiji initiated me into unclutching, that's what I felt. I felt like, yeah, he, Swamiji was giving the example of bubbles in the water tank. How the bubbles from the bottom is created, flows towards the top and then disappears. He was saying, watch the bubble, bubbles, don't interfere with them, don't engage with them they're meaningless and they don't have any connections between them they just happen and dis and uh, they just appear and disappear so when he was sharing that I, I i i could visualize this same kind of feeling where you just sit at the coffee stop at the at the coffee shop at the table with your coffee and you just watch cars motorbikes bicycles people walking back and forth unclutched When we unclutch, we remain aware, we are alert, we are not being drowsy or feeling sleepy or something like that. But, uh, but we are not engaging with thoughts. It's not a withdrawal, it's a, more like an observation, intense observation from the space of Paramashiva, space of superconsciousness. Yes, that Vietnam experience at the coffee shop was definitely, for me, something I could connect to when Swamiji initiated into unclutching meditation. Not only that, but that experience really shows also what actually happens because in our inner space, there's a lot of thoughts, a lot of thought currents, which are constantly going back and forth, uh, depending on, on, depending on how much, uh, what kind of spiritual practice or tapas or whatever you have done. Um, so, and it's just like the streets over there is the same thing. So many cars, so many motorbikes, so many bicycles, everything is going left and right. There's no... There's no order, it's, well, to us, it's complete chaos. But, uh, so it's just like our inner space, whatever is happening, one thought here, one thought there, doesn't matter which direction it goes, why it's going there, doesn't matter. Just watch it come, watch it go, unclutched.
Yes, Nityandam, Agora Shivam. Yes, Ankaching is a wonderful space. First, we get to touch that space by simply doing what we're doing now, just simply sitting and unclutching. But the more we get acquainted to that space, the more we realize, the more it becomes our being. And we can carry that space in our everyday action, which is the ultimate unclutching. Being able to remain unclutched even though you are performing actions in the world. Swamiji is always teaching us life positive. He never teaches anything from a withdrawal or life negative standpoint. Always engaging with life in more ways. Recently actually Swamiji was sharing that we need to get in touch with, the, with our consciousness first, especially as a child. Once you get in touch with your consciousness, the more you engage with the world, the more your consciousness expands. But if you engage with the world before touching your consciousness, you get lost. So, unclutching allows us to come back to experience our consciousness. And once we, we become more and more used to touch that space and be in that space, operate from that space, then we can go into actions. And these actions will enrich and make our, the experience of consciousness more and more powerful, more and more strong inside of us. And that will help us and people around us and ultimately humanity to live in a more conscious way. And um, if anybody has questions, you can drop a comment. I'll gladly share the clicks, cognitions I have regarding this. From what Swamiji has given me, shared with me. Otherwise, we can sit unclutched for a few minutes. Question, have you seen or experienced anything major during unclutching? The, I would say one of the experiences which is coming back to me first, experiences about unclutching, is a, a very deep feeling of settledness. I've always sought that and uh, obviously Swamiji delivered and um, it's like you sink very very deep but you don't become sleepy you're very much aware it's like a intense serenity intense relaxation you feel so alive the body feels so alive feels so fresh Swamji says that when we touch that space, few actually, I don't know how much time, maybe 30 minutes, an hour, perhaps two hours max, when you are in that space, 
your body gets completely rejuvenated completely rejuvenated sits uh, eight, sleeping eight hours and all that that's uh, that's not that's a myth actually it's not real it's just about how many how much you can sit in that space of being unclutched being completely so deeply serene so deeply uh, blissful so that's that's one of the experiences for me which impacted me the most because I was seeking that type of ser that intensity that intense serenity and unclutching is giving that and then another question also how long you had your jatas for I got my jatas jatas for those who don't know is the the mated locks of Paramashiva and um, Jatas now uh, I, I, I'm losing track of time but it's been uh, I would say three years three years and it's amazing it's different. It's very different, though. It's not like uh, like normal hair, of course. You can imagine. Uh, but uh, it is it is so powerful, actually, in many ways. One of the main impacts of jetas uh, is that it constantly pulls your scalp in a way that normally your scalp doesn't get pulled. So it triggers the nervous system and it stimulates the brain. And what it does is that it allows the subtle grooves of the brain to be uh, brought back to life, to get awakened. And that is very important in, or in order to grasp more subtle dimensions of our existence. And uh, we need that because we need to have a complete experience of us to realize who we are. Otherwise, we are always stuck within certain parameters or certain dimensions. So that does help for that. And it also like it strengthens the neck and the spine because of the weight. Um, I used to have a lot of neck issues because I used to play video games a lot and the muscles in my neck were very weak. But Jatas, I can see it happening. It's, it's strengthening my spine and my neck like anything. Like Sonji was saying, sitting with Jatas and sitting in Padmasana. Spine straight, legs in full lotus with Jatas. It does something amazing to your spine. And having a, a healthy spine is very important for the Kundalini to flow freely in the body. And when the Kundalini flows naturally, you live a life, very energetic life, life positive, so many things. Have another question. I can't wait to get harassed and trigger my 54 spiritual antennas. Yes, spiritual antennas indeed. It's also very useful in the winter because it's very warm. It's very warm. And uh, you can get creative. You can wear them in so many different styles if you wish to. Actually, I can share another thing. A few days back, I was doing, uh, I was doing unclutching. And... Uh, your hair is actually part of your body. Uh, we, because we are not conscious of its existence, we feel like it's just like something, but it's actually very much part of your body. Again, I'm gonna bring what I shared earlier. Your whole biology thinks, so I'm just shared. Your whole biology thinks. The tip of your jetas are alive. So uh, the experience I had a few days back, I think three, four days back, I was wearing the jatas down on the side and they were pulling on the scalp and I could I was very much aware of the head because of that and when the kundalini I had a kundalini raise experience and I could literally feel the kundalini going inside each of the jatas it was a very crazy experience like a, found, a, a fountain you know of water so like that um, it, it, it helps and one of the reasons is that because it constantly pulls on your head on your scalp um, you become, you remember your head a lot more. You become aware of your head a lot more, which is very important because 
When you're not aware of your head, you will be aware of the lowest chakras. By default, we are aware of the Muladhara chakra, of the Swadishana chakra, Manipuraka chakra. And we basically, most of the time, we don't go be, be, it's like, unless you do some practice, you will not experience your heart chakra, your throat chakra, third eye, and then Sahasrara. But when you have jatas, they pull on the scalp. So always your awareness is brought back to the head. So that makes your awareness go towards the higher chakras. And when your awareness goes to the higher chakras, your kundalini goes to the higher chakras. So it's actually a spiritual tool. And there's, as Swamiji was sharing, there's a reason why all the ancient, the ancient traditions and the sages who were seeking wisdom and spiritual enlightenment and connection with gods and goddesses and all that, they were having long hair and mated locks uh, because of that. Because of that. That's one of the reasons at least. So where your awareness goes matters. The life that you manifest around you is a result of the awareness you radiate, you experience within yourself. You, it, it, it makes your, your neck straight also. If you have any neck issues, jatas will force you to correct it because otherwise it's, it's going to be very uncomfortable. And it's heavy, it has a certain weight, obviously, you can imagine. It's a little heavier than just hair. So that weight forces you, like, if you put your spine straight, your spine will hold on, will hold the weight and you will not feel anything, you'll feel very comfortable. But if you start to slouch and go like this, then whatever effect that posture has on your spine will be intensified because of the weight of the jatas. So naturally you will not feel comfortable in that position. So you'll be constantly reminded to, you know, work to realign the spine to the cosmic geometry, to strengthen the spine and sit straight and be in a space of yogi, powerfulness. If you have any other questions you can put it in the comments I'll read and answer otherwise you can sit with me and clutch for a few minutes not clinging to any thoughts not engaging with any thoughts just watching them happen and I like wearing a crown made of Rudraksha and I can feel its intensity or my awareness triggers it simultaneously. A Rudraksha on the third eye really works. Yes, surely. Rudrakshas are very powerful uh, energy beads which hold down the energy. Most energy beads cannot hold down the complete uh, spectrum of energy they have limits but the Rudraksha is able to hold on to everything that is why it is used by Shiva a Rudraksha basically means the eye of Shiva of Rudra Rudra Aksha so, um, so so it is very powerful for spiritual growth it stores when you do tapas when you do sadhana when you do spiritual practice when you do the Guru Vax and all that you radiate higher level of energy and that energy gets stored in the Rudraksha and then it helps to, to retain the body in a higher state. So the body will not fall into a lower state as easily. So that's very beneficial when you seek towards raising, raising your awareness, your consciousness, your energy level, your Kundalini more and more. How can we improve our Vak Shakti? And the words we tell ourselves and that conviction that's a very good question sorry for the delay a few seconds delays there um, 
Swamiji says, Vak Shakti is the power which manifests with integrity. Integrity basically means the words you give to yourself and you give to others. So, one thing which clicks with me a lot is that I remember one example Swamiji shared. He was saying, inside your inner space, you feel that you can say whatever you want because nothing is going to happen. You don't see the, the, the side effects, the effects of your words right away because it is at the more subtle plane. But if you go in the street and you start to tell whatever you want to your neighbor, very quickly, if you're saying, if you're talking nonsense, your neighbor, your neighbor will let you know that he's not happy about what you're talking about. So like that, society beats you. When you speak the words outside, if you are not speaking words with integrity, society will beat you. And same goes inside. So we should not generate words that we don't want to generate. We should, we should constantly remind ourselves and, and reduce the amount of words we generate inside of us. When you reduce the amount of words you generate inside of you, actually, it's basically respecting the words you generate. Like, don't think like, oh, I can just utter this word and nothing, it doesn't matter and who cares and all that. This mentality is not, is not going to help you to complete with your Vak and manifest the Vak Shakti. Every word is important. You are manifesting that word. Respect your capacity to manifest words so that you don't manifest words which you don't feel connected to. Words which are not necessarily necessary. So, uh, in that way, when you start to manage the words you generate inside of you and the words you generate outside of you, and you take your words with respect, you respect your capacity to manifest a word. When you, when you respect your words, automatically you will feel like, yes, I actually want to fulfill that word. I'm not just saying that just for the sake of, you know, just speaking for the sake of speaking. I'm speaking because I actually want to manifest something through that. So when that, that sincerity will come back, when we take care of the words we generate uh, inside our inner space. And with that sincerity, automatically you will take your words with more respect, with more serious, not seriousness, but you'll be more like a respect. You'll respect your words and you will feel like, yes, if I say something, I am going to sincerely work towards making it happen. And that will heal the Vak and restore the integrity and then manifest the Vak Shakti. There's a lot of satsangs and uh, Swamiji talks about integrity. You can go on YouTube and check Nityananda Integrity, the wise. Uh, I, I, I firstly got introduced to, uh, uh, to the tattwas, the integrity, uh, through a book, through a book um, called Science of Living Enlightenment. This is the first book I read from Swamiji and in that book, Swamiji talks about integrity, authenticity, responsibility, enriching. And he, he really expands on these tattwas uh, in various dimensions and in directions, uh, different perspectives, so that you really start to get a hold of like what is really integrity and authenticity and responsibility and enriching. But mainly today we feel, I think, I, my personal thing is, I think the marketing uh, mentality is partly responsible for that. See, we want to make businesses, we want to be successful, and, uh, and then we are taught we have to do marketing. But in marketing, uh, you do a lot of BS, actually. You generate a lot of words which are not at all in tune with reality just to create an impact into your listener so that the listener does what you want them to do. So I feel that uh, when I was, actually, I was studying uh, economy and uh, finance in university, and uh, when I, I had the conflict with the, the thought currents shared in marketing because at that time I was starting my spiritual seeking and I felt like this is not right. And uh, so I, you can see ads on YouTube and stuff like that. People, they just, they just talk. Whether it's true or not true, they don't care. They just want to grab your attention and make you do what they want them to do. So that's a big problem. When you're willing to generate words, even though they're not necessarily true, just for the sake of something, because of fear or greed, 
you destroy your VOC. When you destroy your VOC, you lose confidence on yourself, you lose confidence in others, others lose confidence in you, and it just goes downhill. You might be successful to a certain extent uh, in, the, in, the, in the world, but, uh, but you will not be fulfilled within yourself. You will not be able to sit with yourself powerfully and be serene and be unclutched and be blissful. Because deep down you know you're cheating yourself and you're cheating others. And you cannot be fulfilled by that. <laughs> when you know you're cheating yourself and you're cheating others, that cannot bring fulfillment. Yes, for the example about the song, is out of integrity, but in that situation we there's a basic uh, a conflict in, in in the in the principle because as we are living and practicing uh, the lifestyle of brahmacharya, we try to not over engage with the other gender in order to be successful in our vows. So that was. That was also a big reason why this manifestation did not fully manifest. When you live, when you, when you declare the vows of sannyas and you start to live them, uh, satya, truth, ahimsa, non-violence, asteya, non-stealing, aparigraha, living with minimal possessions, and brahmacharya, basically uh, living uh, beyond gender uh, when you when you start to practice these vows certain life a certain lifestyle is adopted is preferable to adopt in order for you to be more successful faster so that was also there What's important, uh, uh, that, that brings a good point actually, what is important is that if you feel you're out of integrity um, and if you feel that uh, the manifestation is not going to happen for various reasons, whether they are some obstacles or you no longer feel connected to the desire you had or whatever reason it is, the, the, the last resort is you have to complete with yourself. You just sit and just say, okay, I gave myself this word and it is not going to happen for whatever reason so i'm withdrawing i'm completing with that word that is no longer something i wish to manifest when swanji was sharing this completion technique with our our words to remain uh, integrated to keep our vak clean and pure um, what clicked with me was that again you have to take your words for granted you should not take your words for granted when you remember you gave yourself a word and you decide to complete, you, you have a certain respect towards yourself. You have a certain uh, honor, you have a certain commitment, you have a certain, you have an integrity with yourself. So it's not like, oh yeah, I said it, it's not happening, okay, who cares? This mentality is not going to help. But you just, okay, I gave that word, I remember, oh yeah, I said I would do this, but now I'm seeing for various reasons, it's not going to So you just complete and restore your integrity and declare what, whatever you wish to declare at that point in time regarding what you want to manifest in your life.
also inviting all of you if you have not have a look at the kailasa.org website this is the great mission that Swamiji is doing to share all these truths these principles to the world to people freely k-a-i-l-a a s a yeah there's a double a so k a i l a a s a dot o r g inviting you to have a look the greatest hindu nation swamji is reviving not only the principles and making them available freely because in hinduism knowledge is free but he's reviving the nation and um, the ecosystem enlightened ecosystem so that people can grow in that atmosphere learn these truths from the beginning, implement them in their lives, and live life in a higher frequency, in the way life is meant to be lived with a human body. The human body is created for enlightenment. So anything which makes you move towards enlightenment fulfills the purpose for which you took the human body. So for that, the ecosystem is very important. That is why the nation of Kailasa is so important. If we, are, if we grow up knowing this truth, for instance, integrity, if you're taught about integrity from day one, then naturally you'll become totally different. You'll, get, you'll be forged in a totally different way. And different beings, a totally different level of being will be manifested which the world very much needs at this point because in today's world we need to manifest something different, something powerful something aligned to the cosmic principles If you have any other question, you can write it in the comments. Otherwise, again, coming back to the space of unclutching. A few moments. Has been many moments now. It's very good. More unclutching. It's always better. We should unclutch until unclutching becomes our very core becomes the space from which we engage with life with everybody in every action every decision don't cling to any thoughts just just watch them come and go untouched, unclutched. Swamiji said, if you had two minutes to teach something to people about what I'm teaching, what I've revealed to the world, teach on clutching. It's the most simple, most practical for anybody. Anybody can quickly grasp the general understanding of unclutching, start to practice, and turn that into their own experience. Unclutching is most simple, most powerful. Simply not engaging with thoughts, not creating any thoughts, not sustaining any thoughts, not destroying any thoughts. If something arises, let it arise and let it go. Don't cling on to it. Just unclutch.
anybody has any question, you can write your question in the comments. I'll share the clicks and cognitions I have about it. Swamiji shared with all of us. Otherwise, sit, unclutched. Don't engage with any thoughts. Just be alive, alert, and unclutched. Okay, great. So that will be it for today's session. So I'm gonna have sessions like this every day, approximately at the same time, live. You can come and sit, do unclutching, ask questions. You can raise our cognitions and uh, our frequencies through the space of unclutching. So we'll close the session with the Purna Mantra, bringing the hands in front of the chest in the Padmanjari Mudra. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Naat Pur Namudachyate Pur Nasya Pur Namadhaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sarvam Bhagavat Shri Nityananda Paramashivam Padukar Panamastu Om Nityanandam Yes, so we're closing for now. I'll see you in the next live session. Don't forget to check out the kailasa.org website, K-A-I-L-A-S-A dot O-R-G, and the YouTube channel, Swamiji's YouTube channel, obviously for powerful cognitions, so that we can sail through this pralaya, this COVID-19 unexpected happening blissfully. So thank you again for coming today. I hope to see you in the next session. And uh, Nityanandam, be blissful.